He could not say a word. His eyes filled with tears at the way Krishna had received him. But Krishna would not stop talking. He was very excited. Do you remember our days at the Gurukul? Oh, what beautiful days we spent there. And do you remember the way we sneaked off into the forest? He went on and on. Rukmini, do you know who this is? Krishna's wife Rukmini answered. Yes, my lord. You have spoken about your friend a thousand times. You also used to say that he will surely come to visit you someday. My lord, your friend must be tired. Why don't we take him inside and let him rest a while? You can talk to him all you want after that. Oh yes, please come in, Sudhama. I was so excited to see you that I totally forgot about anything else, said Krishna. Krishna and Rukmini took Sudhama inside. Sudhama was amazed with the grandeur of the palace. Come my friend, you must be tired after your journey. Let me wash your tired feet for you. Krishna washed Sudhama's tired and sore feet in a golden basin filled with perfumed water. All the courtiers were filled with amazement and respect for their king. Krishna! What exemplary friendship! The king is washing the feet of a poor Brahman. Long live Krishna! They whispered to each other. In the meanwhile, Rukmini arranged for the best food in the palace to be served to Sudhama. All this while, Sudhama had not uttered a word. He was overwhelmed by the way he was received. Suddenly, Krishna looked at the little cloth parcel tied to Sudhama's waist and said, What have you got there? Is that something for me? I am sure you have brought a present for me. Give it to me, Sudhama. No, no, it is nothing. It's just something, stuttered Sudhama. He was too ashamed to give Krishna his humble gift of flattened rice. But Krishna did not give him a chance to hesitate. He grabbed the cloth pouch and opened it. Oh, Sudama, you remember that I love flattened rice. How tasty it looks! As Rukmini watched lovingly, Krishna took a handful and put it in his mouth. Excellent! This is the tastiest food I have ever eaten. He ate two mouths full. As he was about to eat his third mouthful, Rukmini gently stopped him. I think that should be more than enough. Won't you let me taste some? Krishna smiled and gave Rukmini the last mouthful. As Sudhama sat and watched Krishna eat his humble offering, his happiness knew no bounds. He had never imagined that Krishna would be so happy to eat his simple offering. Krishna and Sudhama talked all day. It was the happiest day of Sudhama's life. He was so happy to be with Krishna that he forgot all about why he had come here. Even as it was time to leave, Sudhama did not want to tell Krishna the reason behind his visit. He has given me so much love and respect, how can I ask him for anything more than that, he thought, as he decided not to say anything to Krishna. After spending a few glorious days with Krishna and Rukmini, Sudhama decided it was time for him to go home. My wife and children await me anxiously, Krishna. I must go back to them now. Go if you must, Sudhama, but please visit me again. I will never forget these happy days I have spent with you, he said sadly. As Sudhama took his leave, the whole kingdom came to the city gates to see him off. Sudhama was overcome with happiness and emotion. Only when he neared his village did he realize that he had not brought back any money or food. He thought of his wife and hungry children and was sad.
What will I tell them? They must be waiting for me eagerly, he thought. At least I can tell them that Krishna has not forgotten me and how well he received me. He was lost in thought as he approached his house. Suddenly, he looked up and he was amazed by what he saw. Exactly on the place where his old hut stood was a magnificent palace. It was the most beautiful palace he had ever seen. Oh, I must have lost my way. How unmindful I have become. He was just about to turn away when he saw his wife approaching him from the palace. He was dumbstruck when he saw her. She was wearing rich clothes and gold ornaments. His children were playing about nearby. They looked healthy and happy and they wore rich and wonderful clothes. Father, father! His children rushed towards him. What has happened? Where did you get these clothes? Where did this palace come from? He asked his wife in astonishment. My lord, when you were away, one day suddenly our old hut changed into this magnificent palace and these clothes, servants and food appeared out of nowhere. I thought you had met Krishna and he had given you all this. Slowly it dawned upon Sudama what had happened. He now realized why Krishna had a smile on his face when he ate two mouthfuls of flattened rice that he had taken for him. My dear, this is Krishna's miracle. With every mouthful of flattened rice he ate, our house was being blessed with the wealth of the world. Had Rukmini not stopped Krishna from eating the last mouthful, we would have been richer than the god of wealth. That is why the wise Rukmini stopped him from eating the last mouthful. And he told them all what had happened at Dwarka. They were all happy and contented and thanked Krishna from their hearts. Krishna. Krishna. Sudhama and his family never went hungry again and there was not a single day when they did not think of Krishna. Sudhama and his family lived happily ever after. <laughs>